Hey y'all, how's everyone doing? Well, I'm just going to put on my makeup today and I thought, why not do it together? So this will be a get ready with me. And uh, I've already done my base and contour. And I did try on my new lip product from Chanel that I hauled. And that this is called number 112 Chic Rosewood. And... It's very mauve which is great, but sometimes I need that burnt kind of rust undertone. And Soft Rose was more of a warm rose. This is definitely a cool rose, which actually I always talk about would be better for my complexion, but now I'm kind of feeling like I need that warm rose. Anyway, it's okay. Um, it is not warm. It is not Soft Rose. So I'm fixing to go online and see are they getting rid of it, because if it is, I guess I need to order 40 of them. I don't know what I'm going to do, actually. That really bothers me. But anyway, I'm also collecting up here on my desk, so there is all kinds of little products. Like, hello. Um, the Absolute Musts products that I'm going to do a video on, but I haven't gathered them all yet. But you can imagine what most of them will be. I bet you you know my stuff better than I do. <laughs> or at least as well. Um... I was going to use this today. Let me open it. Um, this is the CoverGirl True Naked um, Nudes is the one this one is, which typically means it's shades of brown. Isn't that interesting? I guess that's because that's the natural shades of our skin. I like that it comes with a dual-ended um, sponge applicator. This is the product. And um, you can get this at your local drugstore and probably your local grocery store. I would say this would be a good staple to have in your makeup. And the whole reason that I wanted to do this one today is because I feel like this has everything you need to do your eyes. Both line them and shadow them. So, what I love about this though, the Sigma Sculpt Highlight and Contour Palette, is I feel like this has everything in it to do your whole face. As far as shadows, shadowing, obviously, and lining, actually, and lining. So that includes lining your eye and your brow. Y'all, I feel like I have got such dark circles. I don't guess I used my um, color corrector pen, and I gotta tell y'all, that thing makes a difference. That's the Chantecai Le Camouflage. Chantecai Le Camouflage. But I also love my Insta Age Rewind from Maybelline. So I'm going to try that and just see if just brightness will help. Sometimes brightness isn't enough. You have to counter the blue undertone of your circles right here at right there, not up in here. I do go ahead and put it up in there just because I like to. Um, I also like to bring it down my nose so that it makes it dark on either side. Um, right like, if you put a bright color here, then the next color is darker. Then there's a light color. I feel like that does more to camouflage a large nose than just drawing to pencil line of brown down. Also, I have found, even though I tend to put a whiter color in where you have creases so that it's not so obvious, I have found, especially with the 11s between the brow and the little drop-down wrinkles on your mouth, that when you fill it with that, even if you blend it out good, um, it's just thick and it kind of sets that wrinkle even more. So I don't know. I do still put it on my chin right here in this wrinkle, but I don't, don't go all the way down to here because I have a large chin. And then on either side of the nose, just because there tends to be redness there. And then in this, what I call the bulldog, um, drop <laughs> makes you look like a little bulldog. And then I do kind of pat it out past the eye and on the inner, inner part of the nose right there and pat it out. And then into the pores because that just kind of now this one you always have to switch fingers and I'll tell you why because you've already got makeup from doing the first one on your finger and then you kind of blend it out and down just blend it out but now you've got too much makeup on your fingers so you just need to switch fingers and I think I may even use a third finger just because I feel like I put a little too much on. And when you pat with a new clean finger, just like you would a beauty blender, um, it um, takes more product off. Now, what I had been doing was putting some there, but I feel like what that does is kind of 
highlight the 11s instead of the opposite. Same thing here. So I'm only using what's left over on my last finger. Not any, not a lot at all. Um, you can also kind of pat back here to kind of wake that lower area up. And what that does is gives you a facelift because it's wider and so it lifts. And that also helps get some off. And then, of course, I've got my trusty, if you don't know what I'm doing down here. Those of you who watch know that this is my trusty makeup uh, towel. And so I'm just wiping off any excess makeup onto it. It's also where I do any other boo-boos that I wipe it off. I did, by the way, go ahead and do the fingernail polish that I got in this yesterday. The new um, Chanel, um, I guess, Christmas pouch. One thing about a velvet pouch is putting that in your purse, it will collect so much dust and hair. Because I guess I'm thinking of my white dogs. But um, in that came the Le Creme Men, which is hand cream. I find this very hard, by the way. You, you twist it open, which is very easy. You just twist it, and it comes right off because it's round. But I find what, that when I squeeze it, it is so hard to squeeze, it literally makes my hand shake to get any out. The first one that I had... In this packaging, it did not do that, so it's probably just this particular one. But when I just had, you know, a regular, I don't have it in here with me, but the regular, the shape is what this used to be, and a different formula, which smelled better. And I must say, this is a little more creamy, but I just I have to say I like the other one better. I guess this is more creamy, though. I like the smell of the other one better. It was a little thinner, though. This is richer. And this is Texture Riche. So maybe it's part of the cream riche. Anyway, um, it did have this style before, and now it's in this uh, kind of iconic packaging because it um, it looks like an egg, but it's supposed to look like it fits in the palm of your hand. And also, it's iconic for when you have it in your purse, and people do like that. So, um, I don't know. The verdict's still out on how much I like that. But anyway, um, also what came in that little pouch was this um, Ballerina 167. Um, fingernail polish and I put that on. So this is two coats. You can see it just is a very pale pink coat. It's very nice. It, it looks like you've had your your fingers manicured. Clearly it's a shiny uh, pink shade. But it's not overbearing of any color. And then you're supposed to put a gel coat over that which I have not done yet. Um, I just thought I'd show you. Got my nails did. Anyway. Um, okay, so let's put some of this on. So I, instead of using brushes, I'm going to use the um, sponge applicator that came with this. And I'm going to use this kind of frosty white right mm. here. The only thing I don't like about this palette is that it doesn't have a mirror. So you have to use it and then use another um, source for a mirror, whether it's uh, mm. you know, a desk mirror like I'm using right now. Bree wants me to um, kick the ball. There. Um, and I'm using the same color for the inner tear duct. Straight to the, I just go straight up and down over the tear duct. And then out over the lid. Just two passes. Um, hmm, what is the coverage like? Alright, so under my brow it looks good. But I feel like I need more for the inner corner than that. So that's what it looks like. So let's just do the other. Again, this is the furthest white color over. It's like a um, slight shimmer. It's not a matte, but it's not sparkly glittery at all. It's not truly even shimmery. It's a very subtle um, shimmer. Very subtle. Make sure I even that out. It's funny just because whether you're crossing over your chest or on the right side, sometimes it just it's just a little bit different how you apply your makeup, how you pressure the makeup. So it just, the coverage may be because of user error. <laughs> or not error, just user differences. Straight up and down on the, on the tear dot. The reason I do that is I get above and below and in this inner area that so needs waking up. And that, I do feel like that is what gives it the, wo the woken up look. And then go straight across and then a little above. Now one thing you can do is just this area if you want, just lightly with whatever is left. And you also can go past the eye and kind of wake up this area back here. And what that does, there's not much on it so it doesn't truly look like you're shadowing, but it just really brightens the eyes. 
Okay, so the next color I'm going to use, I'm trying to decide do I want to go to that or that, and I think I'm going to do this huge switch up and go over here because that's more of a transition color. Again, this is also more matte. These are very creamy, by the way. Very I See, I keep trying to look, and there's nothing there to look at. Yeah, these are super creamy. I bet you could use your finger and have an even better... Um, oh, there is one of those calls. I hate for those to be in the background of when I'm filming, so I'm going to go get the phone and shut it off. And I'll just keep that with me in case they try again. Do y'all get those? I feel like I get so an, an, an inordinate amount of those. See, I feel like I'm having to cold both of these. I don't like that. I don't like that um, I have to have two um, sources when I'm trying to put my shadow on. All because um, this does not have a mirror. Y'all, I feel like this is supposed to be done with your fingers. This is so creamy. Yeah, it's super, oh my gosh, to touch it's like, touch the baby's behind, it's so creamy and and smooth. <laughs> Not that baby's behinds are creamy, if they are, you're in trouble. <laughs> but just smooth, you know how they got little perfect skin, their little butts are so, well, that's what people say. It's not, a baby's behind, that's not a good analogy to use, is it? <laughs> but this is very smooth, very velvety. Um, almost so much that the sponge applicator is not the way to apply it. But I would use a sponge applicator with this, to be honest, before I would a brush. Because it is so smooth. I'm just blending this up to the brow a little. And just blend out here a little. And if you feel like that color is just a little too tight, too uh, dark for blending, then let's do use the second color over to even contour the second one right here. To even contour between that and that can right here this space right here 